Good day gentle people, it's your favorite Mr. Foyer 2. Welcome back to my channel, again in its usual format. Today we're going sky high and I mean way over my head. A big welcome to my latest patron, Carl Klinkenborg. Thank you very much. A few months ago, Hooked Words made a video titled Flat Earth Level Flight Pilot Challenge. So why are we doing this today? Well, that's simple. This morning he created a tweet about it, so apparently he's in need of some attention. And he will get it. Hello Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Hello Nick. Here's an experiment challenge for pilots. And that's why I said I'm in way over my head. I'm not a pilot and I'm not pretending to be. Or anyone else who is inclined to check whether the globe earth model fits with what we can observe and measure in reality. Well spoiler, yes it does. It's 2021 and people still deny the earth is not a pancake. Clearly ridiculous. Oh sorry, wrong video. And if you are the pilot of an aircraft like this Gulfstream jet, you can do this experiment in about three minutes. Or if you want to take longer, then all the better. You'll get more conclusive results, hopefully. All you have to do is fly straight and level. And this is of course where the first problem arises. Is it your version of level or the reality version of level? Because they are vastly different. And from the observation and from the measurements made in those three to six minutes, if you like, we can then determine whether we live and fly on or above a flat level earth or fly around a globe. I will need some help on this, but I'm going to show you why you're wrong. Let's be really clear here what I mean by comparing the globe earth model with reality and the observations that we see in real life and the measurements we can make in real life. That's only fair. I'm gonna let Nick explain himself. Here you can see a globe Earth with an aircraft above it. Of course, it's not to scale. It's just to illustrate the point. To the left, we have the kind of mathematics that is used for the globe Earth model. We need to have a talk about the diagram. You said it's not to scale. And that is all fine and dandy. I don't have any problems with that. But you gave us a number of 25.7 degrees down at the horizon. That would give us a height of 700 kilometers. That's not very honest, is it? So this is an abstract concept. It is a view that we've never ever had of the Earth or us on or above the Earth. That statement has already been proven wrong by Mr. Sensible and his Mage 2 project. But of course we think that we are smart creatures in order to perceive this external reference frame from seeing the Earth from our point of view on or above it. Excellent self-diagnosis. Like the photograph we see on the right hand side here that you might see from the, an aircraft's cockpit with the heads up display. So you're admitting that the Earth curve can sometimes be seen from the cockpit of an airplane. We're making progress here. So that's what we see in reality, but what we perceive and think we are smart being able to perceive but have never actually seen in real life is this external reference frame of a globe. And of course, when you use these uh, mathematical equations and diagrams, the model works in of itself. Both the model and the calculations are based on measurements and observations. Of course they work. No one is going to deny that if you draw a line from a point at a certain height above this sphere that you're going to get an angle that goes down to the horizon and gives us a tangent line that is a certain distance from that elevated point above the, the imaginary Earth. I'm glad we can agree that the model works. That's something Flat Earth has never been able to do. Also, you're gonna have to back up your claim that it is imaginary. As a model, it all works out. But is that what we see? Yes, absolutely. And how can we make this experiment to change what we see and compare it to the Globe Earth model? 
He's really asking for it. He's setting himself up. Well, first of all, we've got this idea that there should be a, a horizon that goes down from eye level the higher we get above the Earth, which we can illustrate by putting this diagram on top of this one and showing the tangent line from the pilot's point of view going down to the horizon here. An airplane at 700 kilometers height. Sure. Now, straight away, this reference frame that we have illustrated here with a mathematical model doesn't prove anything at all. Being able to do the mathematics doesn't prove that you live on a globe. It just proves that you can do Pythagoras theorem and work out what angles and uh, distances should be for tangent lines on that circle or in that model. I agree with you there. The model and the calculations by themselves do not prove we live on a globe indeed. But the problem for you there is that it all matches with observable reality. What we see in reality doesn't reflect this illustration whatsoever. Yes, it absolutely does. Let's have a look at a couple of examples of that. Here is what I presume to be a real photograph of a, the surface at least. The aircraft might be superimposed, but it looks like a fairly natural view. The point being that uh, in about the center of the photograph, we see the horizon at our eye level if we are looking straight ahead. Let me stop you right there. How did you determine the camera was pointed straight ahead? You made a claim without any evidence. I think we humans have a tendency to point cameras at the horizon. And the two aircraft at the bottom appear to be below or in front of the horizon. So that would of course indicate that they are lower than us physically. But the point being is that in reality we see this horizon beyond and uh, above the aircraft. Whereas if we compare that to the model that we are looking at here, then the aircraft is way above the surface. By 700 kilometers. It has to be illustrated like that to fit with the mathematical model, but that doesn't fit with the way we see things in reality when we look at a photograph like this or a photograph like this. This is a picture from Apollo 11. Whether or not you believe this is a real picture, you have to admit we are looking down at the lunar lander over a ball moon and the horizon appears above it. Those two pictures you showed absolutely fit with the reality of a globe Earth. Or we can look at uh, photographs from the cockpit through a heads-up display. And this kind of image is often a bone of contention when arguing with pilots that believe they are navigating above a globe. Because in the heads-up display we see this horizontal line here which basically represents the aircraft's level and it is also the same as the artificial horizon that's located on the instrument panel of the cockpit. You cherry picked a nice image there. Why didn't you choose a picture of an airplane that is not climbing? By the way, the G450 aircraft operation manual has the following to say. The horizon line indicates the aircraft's local horizon. At high altitudes, the line appears above the visual horizon line because of the curvature of the Earth. So there's that. And this is something that we need to use for the experiment, as well as the uh, altimeter, which is also on the instrument panel, but displayed here as well, showing us that we're at 45,000 feet. At 45,000 feet, the horizon is about 3.756 degrees below eye level. So we're quite high above the Earth, and uh, this gap that we see between the horizon line and the real horizon in the distance could be claimed to be evidence of curvature because we see a drop of the horizon that would appear to correlate with the globe Earth model. Which you are now going to dismiss because you choose a picture of a climbing airplane. But we got to think about what we're actually seeing here, whether this horizon is in the center of the field of view of the camera itself, but also the fact that this symbol here shows us that the aircraft's nose is pitched up from level. Called it, you cherry picked an image and then you're gonna dismiss reality based on that image. Let's use my image instead. 
and it would have to do this to fly straight and level so we can assume that it's doing this to fly straight and level no we really cannot you shouldn't do that don't assume anything because at this high altitude of 45,000 feet the air is less dense and so the aircraft has to pitch up in order to travel in a straight horizontal line known as flying straight and level citation needed so no the nose won't be pitched forwards it will be pitched up in order to maintain that level flight citation needed so this is a normal attitude for the aircraft when it's flying straight and level citation needed now even if the information of the heads-up display is done based on a globe model this fact that the aircraft will be pitched up at this altitude with this air pressure will be factored in to the calculations that are done to project this image on here no, it really isn't. I'll let the pilot explain. So in this video, we're going to look at a new simulator by Walter Bislin that accurately demonstrates how an aircraft can follow the curvature of the Earth by simply maintaining altitude. This simulator considers aerodynamics and physics, looking at the many forces acting on an aircraft in flight, including lift, weight, thrust and drag. The simulator shows how these forces interact with the changing direction of gravity as the aircraft follows the curvature of the Earth, and that causes the attitude of the aircraft to follow the curvature of the Earth, while the altitude remains constant. So we'll take a look at this simulator in more detail later in the video, but for now I just want you to notice that the altitude of the aircraft is not changing as it follows the curvature of the Earth. That is how the globe math works, requiring only that the aircraft maintain altitude. That was Wolfie 6020. I'll put a link to his full video in the description. So that is how it actually works. How does Nick think it works? Let's go back to our experiment outline and just recap what we're looking at here. We have the aircraft above a, an imaginary globe Earth that we can only see or perceive in this external reference frame that we've never seen in real life. On the top right we have a photograph as if looking out of the cockpit and it has a heads up display. Down here below that we have an artificial horizon and for this experiment the idea is to keep the artificial horizon where it is, keep it level, keep it horizontal. And again, bearing in mind that this is just a display to represent the aircraft's level. It has no relationship with the Earth beneath it. That is not true, as Wolfie just explained. It's not a superimposed image like the one on the heads-up display. We just have something representing the surface and the sky so that we can show where the aircraft's level is in relation to that. And so it doesn't matter how high the aircraft is above the Earth uh, with uh, an artificial horizon, it won't show an increasing gap. It will just show the aircraft's level. So by keeping this level while we fly straight and level, then we should see the horizon or point B in front of us drop as we move forwards. And the further we go forwards, the further it will drop until eventually we've gone over that point that was our horizon a few minutes ago. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. With your constant climbing, you are launching an airplane in space. And of course, what should happen to the altimeter is that we should see an increase in altitude. Exactly. So it's not level according to reality, only according to your fake understanding of level. Kind of results we can expect from uh, this aircraft, which is a Gulfstream uh, G650, that has a cruising speed of 956 kilometers an hour. And so if you travel just 50 kilometers, then what you should see and be able to measure with the altimeter 
is a curvature drop of almost 200 meters or 186.2 meters to be precise. I can only advise you to watch Wolfie's video. It will help you understand why your proposed experiment won't work and what you did wrong. So these figures have been worked out from curvature calculators and what have you, but if you're traveling at cruise speed, again with your nose up or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Wherever you start your experiment, whatever the reading or the, the whatever you see on the heads up display or through your cockpit window should indicate to you that the horizon is dropping away as you travel forwards. Yes, because you are literally asking an airplane to climb. Here's that view that we had put up in the top right hand corner of our experiment outline and I've superimposed a heads up display on here just uh, showing you what we should see. As I said, the horizon line is point B, our tangent point according to the globe earth model and so in reality if we carry on flying straight and level you are not flying straight and level, you are literally climbing. We should see this horizon drop further and further away from where it was when we started the experiment three or six minutes ago. It's as simple as that. And you feel something so simple. It's pathetic. Thank you very much. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. In the description you'll find links to my socials, like Discord and Twitter. This has been Mr. 4 2 out. Don't panic.